thank you for joining me on FDR Tech. Today we have a Sony cassette recorder made in 1978 from Sony Corporation, Tokyo, Japan. This is a business class tape recorder that retailed originally for $170 from a place called McCurry's, the picture people. And from the research that I found, McCurry's was located in Sacramento, California. And in today's dollars, this recorder is about $800, adjusting for inflation. As you can see, we have a nice little USA sticker here, indicating that this is a 120 volt type recorder, unlike its European uh, counterparts, which are in uh, 240. Let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what about 43 years has done to this thing. So anyway, we have a nice little styrofoam container. We'll take it out. E even the box was made in Japan. That's, that's kind of funny. That's just that's, that's class right there. You don't you don't get electronics made in Japan anymore, or not as much. Sony was pretty top class back then. So let's unbox this thing. First of all, we have our accessory box. With all kinds of goodies and the recorder itself. In a leather case. So let's take it all out. So we have a leather strap, a microphone holder, another leather strap, a remote control, the 120 power cord, and of course, documentation. Let's take it all out. Let's see. So we have, first of all, some little wooden uh, cotton swabs. Again, made by Sony in Japan. Yeah, pretty cool, uh, classy stuff. The owner's manual with the printing and image uh, offset from the center, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, some other cards and documents, and we'll just have a look at all these uh, one by one. So, in our manual, we open it, it has a nice table of contents, various warnings, and um, just cool little images about how to put in batteries, how to make sure you keep the slack uh, wound up. Uh, for anyone that's never had a cassette, that was a big thing. If the, uh, if the tape itself was not uh, wound, it could get snagged and snap inside the recorder. Battery indication, various, uh, Plug our buttons and how they work. Remote control operation. Uh, let's see uh, how to plug in a microphone. Uh, various input output ports and um, how to use the speaker itself. The erasing tool, which we'll show. That's kind of cool how that works. It's a simple idea. How to attach your straps. Troubleshooting guide and specification chart and uh, option accessories that you can get for this thing. Probably not anymore. And of course the back and once again, printed in Japan. All right, so again, we have our cord, straps, all this stuff. So now let's look at the other documentation. So this is a business class recorder. And in it, you can see Sony's little product catalog that had all the various um, types of uh, dictation equipment and um, other various cool recording items and uh, pretty cool stuff I'm assuming very expensive stuff too and another handheld recorder various handheld stuff telephone answering systems and uh, telephone recorders and just you know Sony time savers you know. Sony was a you know, it's a big company back then still a big company now but pretty big in the business world also, we have uh, another important, making sure you wind up the slack on these uh, cassettes, showing you how to um, prevent erasure of the tape if you break out the tabs. And a um, little graphic, I guess, showing about oh, frequent cleaning of the heads itself. These are tape recorders. They do work on magnetic tape, so that was kind of a thing. So here we have the uh, business reply, the Warranty cards, I guess. Um, Sony Products of America. And uh, I guess they could send you more information on uh, 
transcribing your cassettes, I guess. So it's not a registration card, it's just how to, information on how to do uh, transcription, things like that. The uh, limited warranty card, which shows you had a 90 day warranty on this thing. So I guess 90 days was still a thing back then. This was also printed in Japan. Uh, pretty neat. Uh, customer care specialist numbers said, you know, for wherever you live at, such as the Western, Midwest, East, South. I doubt any of these phone numbers work, but if you want, you can give them a try and see if these actually go somewhere. If they do, let me know in the comments below. And in the back too, if you need to write in and get some more help, there's the various different places you can go. Uh, Dallas, Texas, Compton, California, Niles, Illinois, and Long Island, New York. So now let's have a look at the actual recorder itself. Comes in a leather bound case. Let's go ahead and take it out. So the cassette was something that was in there already. It didn't come with it, but this is the recorder itself. Nice uh, metal shell, uh, nice flat plastic. Um, in really, really good shape. You know, no scratches, hardly at all. Actually, I don't think you can see any scratches on here. Um, just in really good shape. Has a serial number. This one also has an asset number from the company that owned it, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, here's all of our controls, our tone, volume, monitor line-in remote mic, and your microphone, eject, and all your buttons, analog tape counter, as well as your recording meter and battery meter. So this particular recorder was uh, owned by AT&T Long Lines. So this was probably used by field personnel to record um, notes and things like that for you know, various jobs they were on. AT&T Long Lines was the long distance microwave side and coaxial side of, of the company of Bell System at the time before they were broken up in the 80s. Uh, if you want to see more information about Bell System and things like that, I'll post a link below and you can watch its fascinating story. So this is the battery compartment we have here. And it, it contains four C batteries. Uh, and uh, there was no corrosion in there, so there had been no batteries that had been left and leaked out, so that, that's actually really nice. So this, overall, this recorder is in really good condition. Um, it's, um, despite the age, it still looks really good. Um, we're gonna see if it plays well. Um, if not, then we'll probably have to kind of fix it, but I'm assuming there might be some issues since this said have rubber belts. Uh, they're probably gonna be stretched out, so that's okay. So, here is the uh, tape eject. Push it once to open the door. And then push it again, or pull to the side to eject the tape itself. And then inside we have you know, the various um, reels, the playhead, and um, yeah, runs. Yeah. So, let's, first of all, let's put the tape in. I'm gonna play it and just see how it sounds. Now this is a mono-based um, speaker, so it's just gonna have, it's not gonna have stereo sound, which is okay. But if we get close enough to the speaker right here, we will uh, have a listen. Okay, so it plays pretty good. Let's uh, fast forward. Okay, there we have a problem. So, let's see, when we fast forward, you see the, uh, it's kind of stuck there. I can hear the motor running. So let's uh, hit stop, pop the window. Let's try something, so we'll fast forward. Okay, so that's as I thought. So the belt is worn out, it is loose, so it's just kind of dragging on the, uh, the motor there, which is fine. Um, I mean, we can replace the belt if they make them, or we have to find it, but 
for now it's okay. We can just kind of tap and make it work. Let's, let's talk about recording and uh, how this works. So let me go ahead and set up, plug in the remote and um, get a few things ready. And I'll show you how to um, record on this thing. So now we're all set up to record. Uh, here's what we have. We have a remote control that controls the stop and play functions of the recorder. Pretty simple setup and an eraser plug. So the way that works is you push play. Let's first put the volume down on that. Uh, oops, and I should have that in. So you push play and right away it's already stopped because the remote's on stop. So basically what it's doing is just interrupting the signal to the play side, I assume. So if we push the switch up, and there we go, we start playing again. And then the annoying guy probably starts talking. Oh, that's just probably actually the part that was erased. So, oh, there it is. Sweet body makeover. So, and then we hit stop again. Program. See, and it just, it kind of winds down. So up again. I've developed over the last so that's kind of neat. So this is what you can use when you're recording. So let's go and talk about the recording part. When you're ready to record, like most tape recorders, you would hold down the record and play switch, which would get ready to record. So let's make sure we're in stop. I'm gonna push record, play. It's ready to um, record. So then we just go ahead and hit the switch. Now we're in record mode. So now we can say things and record and hear it back. So we'll hit stop, hit stop there, roll back about, uh, actually it looks like it stops everything. So we'll roll back a little bit. I'll see it's kind of freezing. Oh. Right. Let's see if we can hear a voice. Six week body makeover. A program that I've developed over the last few. Go ahead a little bit. Now we can say things and record and hear it back. Action. There we go. So those are recordings. But say we wanted to erase a portion of the tape, or we wanted to erase the whole tape, and we don't want to record any of the dead air. Well, what they came up with was this little eraser plug. Now all this does is this plugs in to the mic right here. And all it does is it's pretty simple. Is I'm assuming that what it does is it's just shorted inside of there. So it's just shorting the mic. So when it shorts the mic, nothing picks up. It's just gonna, you're just gonna basically hear the, the sound from the magnetic tape as it moves. Let's go ahead and record. There we go. So now we're recording and I can be talking and all that. We're at the 23, uh, I have 26 mark when we started recording. So we're recording right now, making a bunch of noise, tapping this thing. And so if we were having no eraser plug in there, we'd be recording our actual voice. So let's go ahead and stop this thing. Roll back to the 26 mark. Uh, that's 19, a little too far. So with these, it was kind of a, you get, you get pretty good at being accurate. Okay, so there's the 25, let's go 24 mark. So we start just before we started erasing it. 23 mark, whatever. So let's go ahead and play. Oh, there we go. And now, full volume. And now you just don't hear anything because it's shorted out the mic. And then once it goes past a little bit, so you hear the static, and then eventually we'll pick up the recording again. There you nice go. to you, and is designed and to the plug accelerate plug. weight loss. So that's how that works, the little eraser plug. Kind of a neat little idea. Let's plug it in, short the mic out, and it stops all the recordings on this. Uh, rewind, basically like I said, the rewind on this, the, the belt's kind of loose, so. It sticks a little bit. Uh, if you did have an external microphone, you would plug it into that mic port right there. The line in would be like from a, um, we'll see back then, probably a stereo system or a reel-to-reel uh, -reel, um, recorder or um, not a stereo system, uh, also a uh, record player. 
would just make a comeback nowadays. Obviously, you would be plugging an MP3 player in there because that didn't exist back then. And then you have the monitors, so you could plug in speakers or headphones or earphones as they call them and listen to, you know, uh, the recording or playback um, through uh, the headset. Um, so that's pretty much it for this recorder. Pretty neat little guy. Um, again, here's our little battery gauge. It's telling me how much battery power is in there and all that stuff. And it did, of course, come in the little leather case. Um, so real quick before we stop, we're going to go ahead and um, open this thing up, look at the circuit board, and look at the actual mechanism to see why is it uh, having issues. And then we'll come back and um, wrap it up. With our cover now removed, we can see the motor, belt, and other various mechanical parts in action. And if you look at that belt, you do see a lot of play in it, which is causing the tape to hang during rewind and fast forward modes. So 43 plus years, that's to be expected. Um, nothing could really survive that long. But let's go ahead and lift up the circuit board and have a look underneath it to get a better view. So with the board now up, like a car hood, we can now see the other mechanical parts in there. The reels on your right side is what drives the, um, the fast forward and rewind functions. So right now I'm in uh, fast forward or rewind. Now we are in play, so it's a little bit slower. See, so it is smoother on the play side. But when we go ahead and stop it again and go to uh, rewind mode or fast forward mode it, it's upside down it's hard to tell we will see it hang real quick so here we go push it get a better shot and there I see see how it hung right there yeah, so that that's what's causing it to hang it's just that belt kind of spins on the, the that wheel right there the motors fine I've tested the motor and it doesn't hang so that's in good shape so yeah it's just the age of the belts causing it to hang but Overall plays very nicely and is a very nice recorder for being uh, a little over four decades old. So let's go ahead and uh, put it all back together and wrap this thing up. So now we've seen what's wrong with this thing. The belt after 43 some odd years has lost its elasticity, which is to be expected. And so that's why the tape heads get or the, the reels get stuck or start slipping on the um, the belt there, which is okay. It still works pretty good, so I might fix this in the future, but for now, this thing works pretty good. So, till next time, thank you for watching FDR Tech Channel, and check us out again.